If you're looking to remote view your premium series security camera system from Avalonix that we have here at CCTV Camera World, you can use its desktop Windows software to view multiple locations in multiple windows, and then you can span them across a monitor. I can only record uh, screen recordings for, with one monitor, so I'm just doing this video with one monitor, but I'm showing you how you can use the smart PSS software with your surveillance system that's a PoE-based or a DVR analog security camera system. Either one would work with a smart PSS software. You can even mix them up. You can have a PoE system in one location. You can have an analog DVR in another. But as long as they're the premium series of security camera systems using our premium series analog DVRs or network video recorders, you can connect them to the internet and then view them using the smart PSS software that we have. So here for this demonstration, what I've done is I have opened up my Smart PSS program and I have several devices that are across the country and I'm viewing them using four windows. This is the limit with the Smart PSS software on Windows. You cannot have more than four tabs. You can move them across monitors should your graphics card and computer and be able to handle that. But the maximum is four windows. On a Mac, here I'm going to show you I have a screenshot from my Mac. You can only do one viewing window, so that is a limitation of the Mac OS. Right now, in the beginning of 2023, the Mac OS software is compatible with Catalina and Monterey with M1 Max. We also have a separate version for Intel. M2, it may or may not work. On certain ones it does, on certain it doesn't. But uh, M1 Max are definitely working with this software at this time when I made this video. So as you can see, I can move these windows around, and if I wanted to, I can move them onto a different monitor. Now, when you're watching several cameras, a lot of people say, hey, I want to be able to view in detail. So I'm going to show you a concept about mainstream versus substream. Inside every camera or NVR, there is a stream on the left-hand side. That's the mainstream. And on the right-hand side, it's the substream. When you view multiple cameras, such as in a foregrid view or higher channels such as 8 or 16, there's no reason to be viewing in full stream because it's just going to eat up your CPU resources. Instead, you should be viewing them in substream. So here, now what I've got is I'm going to focus on this. I've got a four channels pulled up. If I right click and do uh, stream type, you'll see it says substream one. If I set it to mainstream, it will, the image doesn't look any different. So I'm going to try this one now. You can't really tell much clarity by going to mainstream in a small window. There's no point in having that. The only thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be increasing your CPU usage on your viewing computer. So here I'm using uh, Smart PSS right here. You, you can see that it's using about 7% CPU and about 40% of my GPU. I have a 1050 um, NVIDIA graphics card. So it's kind of already and with four windows, 16 channels pulled up, and all of them substream, it is kind of going uh, half the resources. Majority of the decoding that's being done is usually by the C GPU, but can also be the CPU. It just depends on the encoding method. All of these are using uh, H.264. If you go to H.265, it'll choke your computer even more. So it'd be very careful if you decide to record with H.265 on your IP cameras or your analog security cameras. The NVR and the cameras will let you decide what encoding you're using. So if I'm using mainstream here, this one actually is not even using that many megabits. So this uh, NVR I have set to very low bitrate recording but certain other cameras may be much higher. So this one is substream at about 5.5 or 400 kilobits per second when I switch it to mainstream. Let's see what happens. It's now a 4K, it's a 4K resolution stream, and I'm waiting for the stream to refresh and, and give me a number there. It can also be your internet connection if it's not fast enough and not uh, initiate the stream. So what I'm going to do is go back, lower this back down to substream. So your internet connection also plays a role. The internet connection at the location of the recorder and also where you are. So now at mainstream, it's using about one megabit per second. So 1000 kilobits per second is one megabit. As you can see, when I play with all of these, if I right now, all of these are substream and they're running fine. Just to show you, they're all substream. I'm not going to go through every single one. I already made sure they were. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and make everything mainstream. So keep a, an eye on the CPU usage. It's going to increase. So it went from about 15 to 
Now, when I go on this one and I make it mainstream, you see now the CPU went to 30%. Let's look at the GPU. The GPU has gone up significantly as well. And now part of my usage is also because of my screen recording software, but here 40%, it was at about 20% before, 23, a lot more now. There you go, it just keeps going up. Now it's 25%. So they're not dramatic shifts, but it all depends on the resolution of the cameras. If your resolutions are all 4K or they're all 4 megapixel, you will see a hit on your computer. My computer right now is a, um, I believe, a 12 core computer. So I have a lot of threads to work with. And there are 12 physical cores on this AMD and 24 logical ones. So some of them are hitting uh, like about 80% load. So if you're trying to, if you have a large system such as a 128 channel security camera system or a 64 channel PoE camera system, or even a 32, and you try doing this spanning across monitors, keep in mind your limitation is based on your CPU, your GPU, and also the amount of windows you're trying to watch at the same time. When you shift these tabs into different monitors, I do foresee that your CPU or GPU may use more to be able to handle that. So keep that in mind. Right now, I'm only doing one monitor out. Hopefully, this gives you some indication of what to expect when trying to view multiple locations or even just one large-scale commercial security camera system from, from um, a viewing office that's either local or remote. Now, the success of your system if you're watching remotely depends all on the pc you choose to view and also your internet connection every recorder where it's located needs to have a good fast internet connection you go to speedtest.net check your upload speed make sure it's sufficient to sustain the total bandwidth of the cameras for example this one four megapixel camera is using five megabits so it's set to be very high quality the higher the megabit the higher the quality so keep that in mind and uh, so your internet connection needs to accommodate the upstream bandwidth for all of your cameras in total at that location. And then at the uh, uh, viewing location, if you've got multiple systems that you're viewing from somewhere, it's better to have fiber. That's what I have here. So I'm able to watch all these systems in real time without any lag because all these systems are in a great internet connection and I've got a good download speed on my internet connection. Hopefully this gives you some info of what to expect with your commercial security camera system with CCTV Camera World using the premium series security cameras and recorders. Thanks for watching the video.